Welcome back to Dungeon Command. I'm playing the Curse of Undeath versus the Tyranny of Goblins. The Curse of Undeath on this side, Tyranny of Goblins on that side. Uh, now, during the setup video, I forgot to do the very last step, which is once you uh, place your monsters out on the board, you draw up to your hand limit size of creature cards. So I drew back up to three cards for Curse of Undeath, so now they have three. And we also have to, for the goblins, draw up to three cards. So I drew up to three cards for them, and I'll show you the new uh, cards that we have. Uh, the first one we drew was Wolf, and level two. Uh, whenever a target creature takes damage from this creature's melee attack, tap the target creature. So that's the Wolf, and we got a Goblin Archer, a level one creature. Uh, has a dexterity trait, uh, 20 ranged, and he only has a range of five distance by the little brackets does 20 damage and he has no melee attack so he's very weak in melee and of course we still have our goblin champion all right so i am just going to say that the curse of undeath goes first they place their models on the board first so we'll just have them uh, go first and we're just going to alternate back and forth uh, turns so i'm going to zoom down a little bit and we'll have the curse of undeath take their first opening moves all right, so here we are with Delithrin Everett, the Undeath Leader. I'm just going to show you the sequence of play here on the back of each rule book that comes in each pack. Uh, you get a quick rules reference at the back of the, of the book. So first we have a Refresh, which is Resolve Start of Turn Effects, Untap Your Creatures and Draw One Order Card. Then we have Activate Your Creatures one at a time in any order you choose. And then you Deploy, Increase Leadership by One and place new creatures on the battlefield and then clean up resolve any end of turn effects draw back up to your creature hand size and untap your creatures once again so we're going to start off here with refresh which of course um, we don't have any start of turn effects right now untap your creatures none of ours are tapped and draw one order card so the undeath uh, is going to draw an order card and all right they do that and the next is to activate your creatures one at a time in any order you choose. So the first creature that uh, he's going to activate is his skeleton, warrior skeleton. Now moving is an action but it doesn't tap your creature. And he has a, a skeleton has a movement of six so he's going to go one, two, three, four, five and sit on top of this treasure chest. And for his action um, he is going to, oh sorry, the second you land on the treasure chest I should say, you flip it over and you see how many treasure tokens are underneath it, and that would be two. So we're gonna place two treasure tokens on this space, and now as one action, the skeleton can retrieve a treasure. And we'll do that. So how you do that is you just take one of them off the stack, put it away, and by retrieving a treasure, it means the morale of their leader goes up by one. So the morale is gonna go from 12 to 13. So that's how treasures operate. Um, and by uh, retrieving the treasure is a, uh, an action that will tap the creature. So now our skeleton is finished uh, doing what he needs to do. And next up we have the zombie. Uh, and he has, only has a speed of four. So he's pretty slow. So but we'll have him trudge over this way. One, two, three, and four. And the reason I avoided that is because it's... Uh, uh, difficult terrain, you would take two movement to go in there, and you cannot go from one corner of a wall space to another corner diagonally across a wall. Anyway, it's an illegal move, you must go uh, the long way around. So if you're here, you'd have to go one, two, you can't just go one diagonally across. All right, that ends the activate your creatures one at a time in any order you choose. Uh, now it is increase your leadership by one and place new creatures on the battlefield. So our leader's leadership is going from 6 to 7. Um, and the zombie didn't actually take an action, so that's why I didn't untap him. Uh, he just moved, and <clears throat> I think he could move again. Let me just check the rules and see if he can do a double move. All right, so I just checked the rules, and indeed, you can only move once during your activation turn. So the zombie cannot move a second time. Uh, and doing uh, no actions means that um, he's pretty much finished. So that's going to be it for the activating creatures. And so now again, we increase our leadership by one, which we've already done from six to seven, and we can deploy um, 
another creature to the battlefield. And indeed, he now has uh, a seven, and we have two, three. So we can actually deploy a creature that has a level four or less. And the undeath is going to deploy a disciple of Caius. Uh, he's an evil beast, humanoid, undead. He has 70 hit points. He has the intelligence and charisma trait. He has a ranged attack of 20 damage, a range of 10, and a melee of 10. And it says each enemy creature takes 10 damage whenever it ends its activation adjacent to this creature. So anyone that moves next to this creature uh, is going to end up taking some damage. All right, so let's find the miniature, which I believe is this one pretty cool looking and we are going to place this lovely looking undead individual out on the board and we will also put him right in the corner here and that's where he's going to start so we'll place him out as well uh, and now that we have done that deploy phase it says the cleanup is resolve end of turn effects which we don't have any draw back up to your creature hand size and then untap your creature. So we're going to untap the skeleton. Uh, and the reason we untap at the end of the turn is so that they can do uh, activate actions if they get attacked. Uh, they can dodge, things like that, which will tap them again. And we draw up to uh, the creature hand size. So the undeath only has two, so they're going to draw one more creature at the top of their shuffled stack. And they're going to add that to there. So now they have three. All right, that is the end of the undeath turn. Let's move over to the goblins and see what they're going to do. All right, so our goblins have deployed here. We have the um, hobgoblin sorcerer and just a regular hobgoblin soldier. And the first thing we do, uh, we do any start of turn effects um, and untap our creatures, but we don't have any. So now we just draw one order card and we draw narrow escape. Uh, it's an immediate, so it will be a reflex uh, it's, you have to have a dexterity trait, be a level 1 creature. So that it says prevent 20 damage to this creature from one source. We can use this card if we're attacked. If one of our creatures is attacked, is at least level 1 and has the dexterity trait, we can use that with them. All right. Up next, of course, is activate. So we're going to activate our creatures one at a time in any order we choose. Uh, so let me just, I'm going to look at some of the cards here and see if... Uh, during activation we're going to use some of them. All right so I've reviewed my cards here and I am going to activate the Hobgoblin Sorcerer and we're going to use Forward the Horde uh, and it's a, any character level one that has the Charisma trait and if we look at our Humanoid Sorcerer he indeed does have the Charisma trait he's level three so uh, plenty of ability to cast or to uh, use this minor action which does not tap the creature uh, it basically says shift three squares so uh, we can one allied creature shifts three squares so he's going to shift himself three squares he's going to go one two three to here uh, and then he's going to take a move so that card is spent and gets put in the discard pile and he gets to move a total of six so he's going to go one two three four five six he is now on a magic circle why does that mean anything because here in the text it says, while this creature is in the magic circle square, all goblins, hobgoblins, and bugbears you control gain. You can tap the creature to prevent 10 damage to this creature from one source. So that's a pretty cool ability, as long as he stays there. Now while he is on there, he also has a ranged attack, and it will deal 20 damage, and it has a range of 10. So he is going to take a shot at the skeleton, which is on the treasure here. So I'll just readjust the camera and we'll see how that works. Okay, and that of course will tap the Hobgoblin Sorcerer, uh, and attacks do that, and it is 10 spaces, so 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. The skeleton is 9 spaces away, is a clear line of sight. Um, I believe, well no, the skeleton actually has some uh, cover, because this blocks line of sight, and I don't believe he has a clear shot to all four corners from one of his corners. The line of sight's a little wonky in the game, but trust me, this is going to give the skeleton um, a blocking ability. So the Hobgoblin Sorcerer will try doing 20 damage to the skeleton. However, the skeleton can do something called dodging, and which means he will tap uh, himself and avoid all the damage from a ranged attack because he is basically has partial cover. So 
nice attempt by the hobgoblin the sorcerer but that did not work okay and lastly is activating the hobgoblin soldier he has a movement of six uh, and I don't think we're going to attach anything or play any cards for him at the moment. Uh, nope. So he's just going to move his six spaces. So he's going to go one, two, three, four, five, six. He'll move to this space. Uh, and that is going to conclude activating um, creatures. All right. And of course, after we finished activating all of our creatures, we deploy, which means... Uh, we're going to increase our leadership by one and place new creatures on the board. So let me just readjust the camera once again. All right, so we are going to increase our leadership from eight to nine. Um, and now we get to deploy new creatures. Of course, uh, we have nine. Now we have six out on the board. So we can uh, do three more levels of creatures. So we could put out our goblin champion. We could put out the wolf and goblin archer or just any one of them. Um, so let's go ahead I think we're going to put out the wolf and the goblin archer, both of them. Uh, so the wolf we will put here in the star space, and our little goblin archer uh, we will put beside the wolf. All right, so let's take a look at them again. Uh, the wolf has uh, a beast, 40 hit points. Level 2 is dexterity trait. Uh, whenever a target creature takes damage from this creature's melee attack, tap the target. So just by doing an attack to another creature, it taps uh, the other creature and the goblin archer has no special abilities. He has no melee attack uh, He has a ranged 20 damage. He has the dex ability level one, but his range is only five So he's pretty weak character uh, But he is a level one character. So there we go. Now. We have a total of nine levels of creatures deployed and at the end now uh, the cleanup is to oh and I prematurely did the cleanup uh, which is resolve end of turn effects, draw back up to your creature hand size, and untap your creatures. So I inadvertently untapped the Hobgoblin Sorcerer early. He should have been tapped by taking the ranged attack at the skeleton, so he would be untapped now. And we draw up to our creature hand size. So we're going to draw two more creatures, and we will have a look and see what they are. So we've got the Goblin Cutter, which is just a little humanoid character 10 melee the creature's melee attack is minus 10 damage against tapped creatures or sorry against yes against tapped creatures Ooh, and we picked the feral troll his level five so one of our he's a regenerate so he gets 10 health back um at the start of the controller's turn the creature heals 10 damage so those are our two cards up to three let's just zoom out and we will we'll wrap up uh i guess episode one all right, so that's going to wrap up episode one of Dungeon Command with the Curse of Undeath against Tyranny of Goblins. Uh, miniatures now moving out onto the board, getting, I guess, within melee and uh, ranged, attack range. Um, so things are starting off a little bit slowly, but uh, trust me, things will heat up pretty quickly once the uh, opposing miniatures start interacting a little more closely. All right, thanks for watching, thanks for subscribing. Join me next time for the next episode of Dungeon Command, where we are playing the goblins and we're taking on the Curse of Undeath. And we're going to see who's going to come out on top. All right, thanks again for watching, join me next time.